If you're one of those many people who wants to start shooting fewer photos with this and more photos with this, listen up. Many of us have what we call a nice camera or a real camera sitting at home. Maybe it was just a spontaneous Costco buy. Who's been there? But if you have one and you're not sure how to use it, I'm gonna help you out. I have another video just on settings, so make sure you check that out. I'll link it here and I'll also put it down in the description you can check out after. Your camera is gonna have a dial on top. I am a Canon shooter, so I'm gonna talk about this in Canon. Your Nikons and your Sonys have similar settings. Sometimes they're just called something just a little bit different, but similar. So you have your, your auto, which is the green rectangle with the A in it. The two that I want to focus on today are your aperture priority mode, which on Canon is labeled as AV, and your manual mode, which is labeled as M. First, let's talk about aperture priority mode. In this mode, you only control the aperture, and that's your f-stop number. Usually it's somewhere between 2.8 and 22, and it goes on either side of that, depending on what lens you have on your camera. This is a Canon 24 to 70 f2.8, so the lowest it will go is f2.8. In an aperture priority mode, you can control that aperture. So what does the aperture do? If you're shooting something like a kid's birthday party, or, or you're taking portraits, sometimes you wanna use that lower aperture because that's what's gonna give you that really nice blurred out background. And you have a nice crisp subject in the foreground and a blurred out background. That's typically done with a very high aperture. And the higher the aperture, the lower the number. It gets a little bit confusing, but f2.8 is a wide open aperture. And the aperture is how much light is let in so so you think of it as like a like a big hole in your camera lens and the bigger the hole the more light that's getting in the lower the aperture number is and as that gets into a smaller pinpoint the higher that number is so an f22 and f30 is a super small pinhole if you're shooting a big wide vista sometimes you want that f-stop to be f9 f11 or even higher because the higher the number typically the more in focus you're gonna be from foreground all the way to the background. So when you move it over into aperture priority mode, you will set that aperture that you want, depending on if you're shooting portraits or a party or uh, the Grand Canyon, you're gonna choose the aperture that you want. And then the camera is gonna handle the shutter speed and it's gonna handle the ISO. So you don't even have to think about that stuff unless you notice that your shutter speed is getting too slow. You picked like an F11, but that puts your shutter speed way too slow, like somewhere around a 10th of a second. Then that's not gonna work for a handheld shot because a 10th of a second, you, you know, your, your body moves, it quivers, it shakes, even if you're trying to hold perfectly still, typically a 10th of a second, you're gonna see some of that blur. You need to open that aperture up and you need to go down. Maybe you need to be at F5 or F4 and then that will bring your shutter speed back in line so you'll be able to hand hold the shot. If you're at a tripod, it really doesn't matter. You can put your aperture wherever you want and the shutter speed isn't gonna make a difference. Okay, let's talk about the super scary word, manual mode. We're gonna keep it simple, but if you do wanna switch into manual mode, I recommend going into manual and then going into your menu. On the Canon, you push the Q button on the back and that'll pull up your, your quick menu, your settings, and go into auto, ISO. So in manual mode, you're gonna control shutter speed and you're gonna control the aperture. And you're gonna let the camera control the ISO because really that doesn't matter too much, especially when you're just getting started. In manual mode, you'll have full control of your aperture and you'll have full control over your shutter speed. How do you know when you have those right? How do you know you're gonna get a good exposure? There's a little trick and sometimes people don't, don't realize this, but either when you're looking in to the viewfinder or if you're just looking at the back screen, you're gonna see a little exposure monitor with a little white dot. And if you change your aperture or your shutter speed, you're gonna see that little white dot either move to the left or move to the right. When it's right in the middle, the camera is telling you this is a proper exposure. And if you're looking for a slightly underexposed photo, move your settings until that white dot is just on the left side of the center. If you're looking for a slightly overexposed photo, move that little white dot just to the right of center. And then once you have the exposure dialed in to where you want it, simply half press your shutter button, get your focus, and then push the button all the way and it'll take the photograph. So a quick summary on getting out of auto is to choose either aperture priority or manual mode. And if you choose manual mode, 
set your ISO to auto so you don't have to worry about that. And you can practice setting your aperture and your shutter speed. If you choose aperture priority, play with the different aperture numbers and just experiment and see what difference it makes. I'm gonna leave it there for now. We can get into more details in future videos, but for now, to get you out of the auto mode, this is gonna do it. And if you happen to be in the San Diego area, let me know, leave a comment or send me a message. We can go out and do a photo walk and go over some of these and just go over some settings and help you really get to know your camera.